right? Let me just take a breather. Okay, let's get into it. Romans 7. Nah, I'm dead serious. 8. Because Romans 7, y'all don't ever see too many breakdowns online about Romans the 7th chapter. I might clip this and put out this Romans 7 breakdown because a lot of people, hey, I'm going to tell you right now, if you're in the spirit, uh, you ain't going to know what Romans 7 is talking about. A lot of people go to Romans 7 and accuse Paul of sin. Let's see what Romans the 7th chapter is talking about. Romans 7 solidifies. So, okay, you got this win under the law talk. So, Romans 7 is going to go into an analogy on how that's demonstrated and what Paul is talking about. The spirit, the type of spirit that the Father put on Paul, uh, uh, jam everybody up, man, if you ain't teaching the right doctrine. Right? Let's get to it. Romans chapter 7, verse 1. Man, yo, <laughs> my bad, I'm about to get into it, but this is, this is exciting and crazy. You know what I mean? This is crazy. This is wild. All right, so Romans 7 and 1. Know ye not, brethren, I speak to them that know the law, how the law have dominion over a man as long as he live. Pause. Let's slow this John down. Let's slow down. Let's slow down. Right? Uh, uh. Okay, I just go over it. We're supposed to be crucified with Christ. Right? We're supposed to be dead to sin. Right? So it's giving you an analogy. It's bringing this up. Think about it. Again, Paul ain't just writing anything. He's, he's, he's bringing out certain context from the law so you can understand why he's saying you're supposed to be delivered from the law. So he's about to go into a scripture. He's about to go into an idea on how you could be delivered from the law while keeping the law. Let's prove. I'm about to prove it. Watch this. But I ain't going to interrupt myself no more. Uh, Romans 7 and 1. Know ye not, brethren, for I speak unto them that know the law, how that the law have dominion over a man as long as he live. Well, that's a question. Uh, how, how, how the law that have, it's like, yeah. how that how that the law have dominion over a man as long as he live? That's a question. Right? It said, Romans 6 and 7 said, for he that is dead is freed from sin. Right? See that? Verse 2. For the woman which have for the woman which have an husband is bound by the law to her husband as long as he live. But if we so like it. So that's a fact. But if the husband is dead, she is loosed from the law of her husband. She's loosed from the law of her husband while keeping the law. You see that? Because she's performing it. That's how she's loose from the law of her husband because the law is being performed and she's still loose from that same law. Watch this. Verse 3. So then if while her husband live, she be married to another man, she shall be called an adulteress. But if her husband be dead, there, if her husband be dead, we got two covenants. We got the old covenant. We got the second covenant. We're supposed to be married unto Christ. He's the bridegroom. It says, so then if her husband live, she shall be married to another man. She shall be called an adulteress, right? But if her husband be dead, she is free from that law. So that she is no adulteress, though she be married to another man. What that got to do with us? What that got to do with Christ, right? The Bible explains itself. Romans 7 and 4. Wherefore, my brethren, ye are also become dead to the law by the body of Christ. Come on now. We dead to the law by the body of Christ because we delivered from the law, meaning it's written in us now to perform by the body of Christ. You see that? So by the body of Christ, by picking up that work, uh, the, the law is written in us to perform was just holy and good all the time. And for no other reason, look, I'm reading again. Wherefore, my brethren, you are also become dead to the law by the body of Christ. Watch this. That you should be married to another, even to him who was raised from the dead, that we should bring forth fruit unto God. Bringing forth fruit unto the most high God is being dead from sin. We know this because we just covered Romans the sixth chapter. 
That's what this is talking about. So now this ain't under the law, ain't under the law. To go get an understanding of what Paul is saying about not being under the law, you have to go into the Romans, the 7th, 6th and 7th chapter to understand that. It says, for when we were in the flesh, this is a past tense nature. A lot of people will use Romans chapter 6 and 5 to say, well, Paul said uh, what he wanted to do, he thought not to do in this. No. Romans, so with Romans, the 7th chapter Verse 5, proceeding down, is dealing with the ramifications of the flesh. It's dealing with uh, when you operated in the flesh and what those motions was like, comparing it to being in Christ now and delivered, right? Watch this. Let's go. Romans 6 and 5. For when we were, went past tense nature, for when we were in the flesh, the motions of sins, which were... By the law did work in our members to bring forth fruit unto death. Verse 6. But now we are delivered from the law. That being dead wherein. It's like it. But being dead wherein we were held. That we should serve in the newness of spirit and not in the oldness of the letter. The oldness of the letter was bringing forth those carnal ordinances. Those carnal, diverse washings, all of those things that didn't make us free from sin. That's what this is talking about. That's what this is talking about, because the whole idea of Christ and his function is going into animal sacrifice and that cleansing. The dead letter. People say, how did the law work? Rev? You had to literally go slaughter. You had to literally put people to death. When you're in Christ, you don't have to do that. As a matter of fact, Christ said, who, who is without sin cast the first stone? The man that was without sin had grace and mercy and told the one not to sin again. That's how you operate. And if you ain't free from sin, you wouldn't even know how to operate in that operation because you're carnal. Right? Verse 7. What shall we say then? Now, now Paul has to speak in a certain way. He has to ask a question because somebody might get confused. Right? What shall we say then? It's a question. Is the law sin? God forbid. Absolutely not. The law, Paul, affirmed, Paul affirmed the law to be just, holy, and good. Let's see. Is the law sin? God forbid. No. I had not known sin, but by the law. For I had not known lust, except the law said, Thou shalt not covet. But sin take occasion by the commandment. That's a fact. If sin didn't take occasion by the commandment, why did you need to go keep the commandments to repent then? Uh-oh. Huh? If sin didn't take occasion by the commandment, why were you under the law? Exactly. Right? But sin take occasion by the commandment. This is why Paul is saying we're supposed to be delivered from the law with it written on us. Not to have to repent at the law. Right? Because if you have to repent at the law, you show you still ain't weaned from the breast yet. Right? You still on milk. And everybody that's on milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness. Don't take it offensive. Just clean up. We all had to. We all got to. It says, wrought in me all manner of conspicuous, for without the law, sin was dead. For I was alive without the law once, but when the commandment came, sin revived and I died. Right? Being free from righteousness, right? Ain't nothing good about being free from righteousness. We just read it in the previous chapter. And the commandment, which was ordained to life, I found it to be unto death, right? Because you repent all day at the law, at the law, at the law, keep the law, keep the law, keep the law, but you still can't be consciously free wherein, which is why the high priest had to come make an offering for your sins and his. That's a fact. Even, even to the point, an animal had to be put to death. <laughs> Crazy. Verse 11. Romans uh, 11 and 6. Uh, so like Romans 7 and 11. For sin took occasion by the commandment, deceived me, and by it slew me. That's a fact. Couldn't be free from sin under the Levitical law. Wherefore, the law is holy, and the commandment holy, and just and good. Now, this is the same law Paul affirmed in Romans the 8th chapter. Right. Because there's a there's a next chapter. They said, uh, let me let me just get that. Right. So let me read that again. Romans seven and twelve. Wherefore, the law is holy, the commandment holy, just and good. 
This is Romans chapter 8, verse 4. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. That's why Christ died. So the law can be written in your heart, according to Jeremiah 31. So you can know the father. So the father can know you. Anybody professing that Jeremiah 31 in part hasn't been fulfilled, then you have to admit that the father don't know you and you don't know him. Because that's what the Bible says. They will know me. He also says he's no respecter of persons, right? Let's keep reading. Uh, verse, verse, verse 13. Was then that which is good made death unto me? God forbid. So did the good things of the law of was just only good make death unto me? God forbid. But sin, that it might appear sin, worked death in me by that which is good meaning I had to go keep repenting under the law because I couldn't be free from sin consciously Paul's writing in this way comparing Christ's sacrifice to the Levitical priesthood this is why he said I speak to them that know the law though they're not probably just going to be confused about what Paul's talking about it says working death in me by that which is good the law that sin by the commandment might become exceedingly sinful Lamb after lamb after lamb after lamb. No. No. Calf after calf after calf after calf. Dove after dove after dove after dove. Animal after animal after animal after animal. Hebrews already said it's not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sin. Come on now. Verse 14. For we know that the law is spiritual. Oh, come on now. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. This is why Paul said, I speak after the manner of men, because he now has to talk in a way uh, of people being in the flesh before they come to Christ so they can understand this. For that which I do. So is Paul saying that is Paul professing that for what that would. So right now, people will go to this and say, Paul said, for what he do, he allowed not. And, and, and he could do no good. No, because he because Romans seven. And um, five says, for when we were in the flesh, the motions of sin, which was by the law, did work in our members to bring forth fruit unto death. He's explaining what it was to be in the flesh. How do we know this? Look at what verse, the next verse says, for when we were, verse six says, but now we're delivered from the law that being held, we're in. Uh, so like it now, now we're delivered from the law that being dead, we're in. We were held that we should serve in the newness of the spirit and not in the oldness of the letter. So Paul couldn't be. And, and, and just a just few verses down saying that he can't serve the most high. He's struggling through sin when he's writing and substantiating. We could be free from the exact same thing. Come on. But this is showing you when people do this, they're not reading the Bible. Right. We have to read. This is very fundamental, y'all. Let's keep going. Uh, Romans seven fifteen. 15. So he's going to go into it from the carnal mind. Right. For that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that do I not. Right? So I'm going to read it again. For that which I do, I allow not. Right? For what I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that I do. That's a fact. That's why you got to keep repenting under the law. That's why people continually and continually and continually went back to the law making all these sacrifices and, and, and animals under the Levitical priesthood because you was dirty as heck. And people would confess right now that they can't be sin free and say, hey, our righteousness is as dirty rags. Ah! But even though Christ said he's going to present you without spot or blemish. So Christ isn't going to go get dirty rags and say, hey, see, they clean. No, you have to clean up. You can't. Get, Christ isn't going to go get a dirty rag and present it to God and say, hey, they clean when they're dirty as hell. Right. Through this sacrifice of Christ, you're going to be like Christ and your father in heaven. Therefore, clean. For then I do which I would not. I consent unto the law that is good. Verse 17. Now then is it so like it. Now then it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwell in me. For I know that in me, that is, in my flesh, right, dwell no good thing, for to will is present with me, but how to perform which is good, I find not. So one to say, well, he's saying that in his flesh, because so now somebody get caught up and say, well, we in the flesh. And he said, in the flesh ain't no good thing. So now what, man, what, what are we going to do? He said it right here. Huh? Well, let's deal with that. 
Hebrews, I mean, Romans 8 and 4 again, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, hello, but after the spirit. Let's keep doing it, though. F verse 5, for they that are after the flesh do do the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit they do. Verse 6, to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. This is what Paul is explaining in Romans 7, right? But there's good news. Let's keep reading. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. This is what Paul is talking about. Verse 9, but you're not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so, be the spirit of God dwell in you, right? The spirit of God can dwell in you now, right? Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he's none of his. Verse 10. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit of life is be so like it. But the spirit is life because of righteousness. But if this but if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, that's very important. So the Bible is suggesting the same spirit that raised up Christ from the dead can dwell in you. Right. So when Paul is speaking from a carnal state. In, in, in Romans the seventh chapter saying in my flesh dwell no good thing that's because you ain't got the Ruach you don't, you don't have Christ so he has to speak from that nature on why you now need him verse 11 but he didn't gear a book to, just to teach how, how, how you just, just sinful and never be able to come out of that it's madness verse of, Romans 8 and 11 but if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal body somebody I'm in the flesh I never do good well what does the Bible say Romans 8 and 11 but if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal body by the spirit that dwell in you therefore brethren we know the better is to live after the flesh to live after the flesh you shall die for if you live after so like it, yeah, for to live after to live after the flesh, for if you live after the flesh you shall die. But if you through the spirit mortify the deeds of the body, you shall live. And this is why I call the camp SOG. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. That simple, man. Back to Romans seven, right? Uh verse nineteen. For the good that I here go another scripture they use to take out they take out of context. I'll praise through the spirit and power of Yahweh Yahweh Shah for for understanding and edification. I get I'll receive more understanding as I read and, and teach the good news, right? It's all through the Holy Spirit. For the good that I would, I don't do. But the but the evil which I would not, that I do. Which is why people had to repent always at the law, right? Right? Or they would have just stopped doing animal sacrifice because they could have already been perfect through the conscious mind. We wouldn't have needed Christ. This is where Paul is speaking from. Verse 21. I find in the law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. But I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin which is in my members. You see that? Which is why you needed to go back to the law and repent. O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body of death? So if Paul, so if Romans 7 was about Paul not being able to come out of sin, he asks us a question. Well, who's going to deliver me? It shouldn't have been nobody. Let's see what the answer was. I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Why would Paul be thanking God through Jesus Christ our Lord if he couldn't come out of sin? Uh, what's the thing? Because some people, there's an idea that Christ died and you still can't come out of sin. Paul just said, oh wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body of death? So he's comparing Christ's death to the law. In Romans the seventh chapter, he said, I speak to them that know the law. I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with the law, so then with the, the with the mind, I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. This is why he said, the, the spirit mortify the body, that you walk in the spirit and you don't serve the uh, flesh, because the flesh is enmity against God. It's not subject to the law of God. Neither indeed can be. Right? Jeremiah 31. 
As we finna hit Romans 8 too. I'm sorry, we got, we got to hit Romans 8 real quick. I already got into it. Then I end it there. I get a few things out of that and I end it there. Romans 8. No, I'm sorry. Jeremiah 31. Oh, this got to be dealt with. And then I just say some stuff because, you know, some people, what, what? not just deal with this right here. Some people say, well, if we're in the new covenant. Why are we still teaching our brothers? Huh? Christ said, who is your brother and who is your uh, sister and mother? Those that do the will of the father. So those that's doing the will of the father, you're not teaching them because Christ already affirmed when he goes up, the Holy Spirit's coming down and the Holy Spirit is the one that's teaching. So you're, by default, your brothers and your sisters and your mothers are, are those that's already doing the will of the Most High God. That's who your brothers, sisters, and mothers are. So you're not teaching them because the Holy Spirit is teaching. That's a fact. So all of them are those that are in Christ. But let's get Jeremiah 31 real quick because I have to bring this out. It's only proper that I do. Jeremiah 31 verse uh, 1. Verse 31. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. When was those days? Maybe it was those days when Christ came and threw a monkey wrench in the uh, nation of Israel, start raising the dead by the thousands, leading thousands to repentance, uh, uh, teaching a whole new entire doctrine. Maybe it was those days. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord. When I, maybe, maybe it was the day when Christ said, this is the blood of the new covenant. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Not according. Some people, we go into the wilderness. Oh, we go into the wilderness. Let's see what Jeremiah said. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of Egypt, which my covenant they broke, although I was a husband to them. People ain't reading the Bible. What wilderness are y'all talking about? As a matter of fact, America could be the wilderness right now. Hello? Do y'all not know wilderness only means in Hebrew a sign? You had the wilderness, you could have, you could have had the wilderness of, of, of Canaan. This could be the wilderness of America. But when people don't get into that Hebrew and that word, y'all don't even like you have people screaming, you don't even know what wilderness means, man. This is crazy. But anyways, verse 33. Jeremiah 33. Uh, 31, 33. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with them after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my law in their inward parts. According to the, according to the New Testament, this is what the writings is about. The law being in our inward parts. But we're going to get that out of Romans 8. It says, and write it in their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. By default, if you don't, if, if, by default, you have to throw the New Testament away and it had to be a lie because the New Testament is affirming we're God's people and we know him now. Right. That's what it's saying. But people are run contrary to that, saying they believe in the New Testament. Run back to Jeremiah 31. And you will have to believe by default that you don't know God and he doesn't know you. Yeah, because now I would ask the question, well, when did that happen? Do you know God according to Jeremiah 31? Do you know God according to Jeremiah 31? Because if it didn't happen yet, you don't know God. Let's read it again. After those days, saith the Lord, I'll put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts. I will be their God and they shall be my people. You don't have a temple right now. So how do you know God? Huh? Christ is the temple, right? His body is the temple, right? Huh? Isn't that how you know God now? Huh? Huh? Think about people. Hey, all praises to the most high for the increase. That's all I'm saying. We got these daggers and we go have them. We go have it. Don't even matter. Let's just keep reading. It don't matter. You know what I mean? If somebody want to step, they can step. It says, uh, <laughs> and I will put my law in their inward parts and I will write it in their hearts and I will be their God and they shall be my people. Hold on. So like, yeah, give me one second here. One second. Put this on. Pause. How y'all doing? Good, pretty good, pretty good. I'll be back, y'all. Give me one second. Okay. Uh, so, we want the stones. We only teach today. Okay. Okay. Got it. Got T listed over there. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank